Hi, goalies. Welcome to another Fuel podcast. I'm being joined here by Steve Brown. And uh, we're pretty excited about the podcast and the uh, feedback that we've gotten, especially from uh, all levels of goalies, right? And the parents, yep. right? So it's been, been really fun getting some phone calls and some text messages about it. And I'm glad that you're enjoying them. So what we're going to talk today is about commitment. And if I asked you, if I said to you, Steve, g- give me a definition of what commitment is to you. What, what, would you, what would you say commitment is? To me, it's what do you put your time and resources to? And what okay. are you willing to um, take on to be able to persevere through something? So what, all right, so what are you willing to take on? That could also be translated what you're willing to put up with. Yes, yeah. You know Absolutely, what I mean? Yeah. Like, so we play a position which is really taxing, right? Mm-hmm. Taxing on us in terms of, of um, you know, you get scored on, you get a guy standing over you, pumping his arms and everybody laughing and jumping around. Like, that's, that's not fun. Um, and you've got times where you don't play. Right? Maybe you're not the starter, maybe you're the boy of the starter and you're not playing the next game, whatever. Like you've got to you've got to take some pretty hefty lumps. Yep. And so when you were saying that I was just thinking about I was kind of flipping it a little bit, like what you're willing to put up with. Sure. You know, the the lumps that you're gonna have to take along the way. And you know, what do you kind of say to yourself when when you question your commitment, when, when you're sitting there for the third game in a row, you haven't touched the ice for a week, two weeks, and you're going, hmm, what, how, like, how do you talk to yourself? How do you talk yourself through that? Yeah, I think we just did a primer a couple of days ago, okay. or a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I think one of them is to recognize what your strengths are. Right? I remember like, that. It was an like, assignment. Was that an assignment? Or yeah, it was, it was an assignment. Okay, yeah, it was an assignment. Sorry, yeah, I got like, what is? See, I actually do them. See, see that's <laughs> awesome. So, so what, is, what are your strengths, right? And you sit down and you kind of think about what your strengths and what your values are, right? And really we're looking at those things that make you you, right? Like, and these are traits that if you were to ask the people closest to you, your teammates, maybe your coaches, parents, friends, the people that know you really well, yeah. what makes you really good? or make, what makes you who you are, mm-hmm. right? And then identify those three or four or five things that like really kind of stand out. And imagine, you know, how would you use that stra- strength to help you in that moment? Because that's a stressful situation that you outlined, right? Yeah. So if I'm feeling stressed and I'm feeling yeah. out there, how would I use that strength now to now help me out, right? Because what happens is when people get lost on commitment, it's usually that they lose their sense of purpose, but they also kind of lose their sense of control, right? And we've talked in previous podcasts about the importance of being able to control the things you can control. Yeah, when that's people, such a huge underlying theme, right? Yeah, it always seems to come back down to that. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't like every, we take a topic mm-hmm. and it comes back to control what you can control. Like yep. in the stories, you know, incidences, whatever, it seems to always kind of lead back to that. Interesting. Because when you, yeah, it, it's fascinating, but it's, it's just human psychology, right? Is that when we're at our worst, we're focused on things that we can't control, right? We're focused on events in the past and trying yeah. to reconstruct them or try to refigure them out. Yeah. We're worried about stuff in the future that we can't really control, right? So when we're at our best, we're just taking care of the things that we need to, right? Maybe we're preparing for the future. Maybe we're looking back at the past, but trying to take away key points that we can move forward better with in the mm-hmm. future. But when we just kind of aimlessly go back in the past or we aimlessly kind of, we find ourselves lacking in commitment, one of the key s- sources of just grounding yourself, bringing you back to the moment, bringing you back to the present, bringing you back to action, right? Because at the end of the day, it's always about purposeful action too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is to be able to be aware of what you can control. I can't have purposeful action with things that I can't control. Could it be also, could it be why? Like, could you go back to your whys? Oh, yeah, So, absolutely. like, if you're, if you're sitting on the bench or you haven't won a game for a while 
or you're sitting there with the your bottom five in the league and save percentage. Can you go back to why you play? Absolutely. You right. know, I'm just I'm thinking that that may be when things are low. That's testing your commitment. Then maybe that's something you can go to. It's funny. One of the first things that when in Goalies come in to work on different things, right? Yep. But usually one of the first questions I ask them is, what do you love about either being a goalie or what do you love about You ask that right hockey? off the bat? Like, yeah, why, why are you doing this? It's usually, <laughs> why, yeah. are you, why are you a goalie? You're a nut. Yeah, yeah and I mean, but I, I think <laughs> Why would you do that? Why are you a goalie? I don't understand. Yeah, I, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a goalie per se. It could be any other sport, right? Yeah. Or any task or anybody who's trying to perform in something. Like, there's a love or a connection there right to almost to it right or you you hope there is right yeah. or at some point there was sometimes they come in and they're disconnected right and part of that idea of commitment is mixed up because the passion's not there their why right if you want to use that term right their why has become disconnected right and there's a variety of reasons that that might spill out but i do i ask them hey what do you love about what you do what is it that you love what brings you there right and usually if they go back, right, usually it's when you're a young kid and it's just playing or having fun, right? Or with goalies a lot of times, it's making the save when no one else could think I could make the save or mm -hmm. knowing that I shut somebody yeah. down, right? Or it's this, this feeling of kind of like pride comes up, right? And, or this, this, just that feeling of being part of the team and knowing everything was on my shoulders, right? Whatever so that is. It's funny you say that because in Goal Mag, it's the, like the biggest, best, website for goalies right they do podcasts and they they always have nhl goalies and and they ask them the same question why did you become a goalie and it's usually a combination of the gear right the me included jerry cheever's mask <laughs> so it's a combination of the gear and the the feeling of making a difference and having that that power control to impact the outcome of a game mm -hmm. and it, it just seems like over and over you're listening to the same thing right which is you know the gear is kind of the fun part the tools and then that they, they always seem to gravitate they want to be the guy they want to be the guy that you know the game depends on I thought that was really interesting yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a theme from the goalies that I work with, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the themes that you hear all the time, right? Um, maybe they got into goalie originally because they just needed a goalie, right? And they liked it, but there was something. Johnny, go goalie, exactly, you're in. Right, but, they, <laughs> but there's something that it elicited in them. It's something that it brought out in them yeah. that they connected with, right? And that connects to their why, right? Somewhere along the line, you know, how many professional athletes we talk to and like they talk to a little kid and they're like, you gotta love your sport, right? Like, you gotta, yeah, you gotta, gotta love, love, you gotta gotta love it yeah, and yeah. you gotta try hard, right? And, and at some point it, it does become a job, but if I, can, if I can stay connected to what I love about it, then it becomes easier, mm -hmm. right? And so that why, you can't lose it, right? You can't lose sight of it, right? And I think yeah. sometimes it becomes a job, sometimes it becomes a chore, sometimes it becomes a task, Sometimes it comes another thing on your to-do list. So yes, the more you can think about your why, the more you're gonna be able to kind of persevere with stuff, the more you're gonna be able to engage with things, the more you're gonna be able to take on challenges, right? So just knowing, having that why in is very important. And then, you know, one of, one of the things that I've always felt, whether, do you know the story about the, the hedgehog and the, and the uh, the hair from uh, Good to Great. Go. All right, so there's a, head, there's a story, there's a chapter in the book, and they talk about the, the hare and the hedgehog. And they both had the same, or the fox, sorry. Okay. The fox and the hedgehog. I'm sorry. familiar with that one. Okay, yeah. the fox. So the fox, right, he's always looking. You know, the hedgehog keeps on, you know, there's the goal, and the hedgehog keeps on going at the goal. And the fox keeps on going in different avenues. 
And that, it, that gets into commitment, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not fully, the hedgehog was fully committed. <laughs> he was in, <laughs> that's what I want to do. Yeah. And the fox is kind of back and forth with his commitment level. Now, I've, I've always felt, no matter what it is, forget about goalie, like talk about business, professional, whatever. The people that stick it out the longest, eventually something good happens. And I feel the same way with, with the goalie stuff, meaning if you can go through the crap and stick it out as long as you can, eventually you're going to get a golden egg. Mm -hmm. And that golden egg is a start making a team, you, you, you know, like, I just feel like if you plug away and plug away, that you'll end up with an opportunity, and then what you do with that opportunity will then, you know, dictate mm -hmm. what happens. That opportunity doesn't always have to be fair either. Meaning, all right, so you get your opportunity, and the team hasn't won in a month, <laughs> right? And you're going to get one game and you're playing the best team in the country. And if you don't win, you're back on the bench for another month, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like, it doesn't mean the opportunity is ever going to be fair. But I, I just think that if you, if, you st if you stick around long enough, if you grind long enough and you stay committed, eventually you're going to get that chance. Do you think that's, I, you think that's fair or you think that's a little bit idealistic? I, I think it's, I think it's a good personal narrative to have, okay. right? Um, I always go back every year when there's like the Oscars, and I'm not a big movie fan. The or Oscars. Pop, or pop oh, culture. we're gonna t we're gonna talk <laughs> movies in today's podcast, <laughs> Fuel Podcast. We're gonna talk movies with Steve Brown. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not very big in the pop culture, but okay. I do. You do see like that actor who's been acting in like bit parts for like 40 years, 30 years all of a sudden had that one all break sudden, and then all yeah. of a sudden gets like the supporting actress, right? And you think about the time that was... And then people it. think they're an overnight success. Exactly, right? But like... They've if been you, grinding for yeah, 40 but, but years. Yeah, the grind yeah, yeah. That, that it took them, yeah. right? And that's part of the story, right? Yeah. And it's part of like their commitment to that why and it comes into the fabric, right? And so the goalie, I mean... Look at last year's Stanley Cup, right? Like, you know, there's yeah. like there's a grind that, that takes place. Yeah. You never know when it's gonna happen, but are you ready for that moment? Right. Right? Are you, and I think that's that's huge, right? Because if you lose sight of your why, right, and you're not ready for that moment, and you talked about it might not be the best moment, right? But yeah. if you're not ready for it, then you've missed it, right? Yeah. But if you continue to grind, if you continue to be patient, continue to be open to it, then when the moment happens, you're gonna be your best self or you're going to be more likely to bring your best self. And whether you're successful or not, you know you did everything that you had to do for that moment. So if that moment doesn't work out, there's no regrets. There's no like, damn it, you know, I should have done that, I should have, you know, that, that kind of thing. Where, where you can go into it knowing that you did everything that you had to do mm -hmm. to be prepared for for your moment and what happens when that moment doesn't come do you say the same thing i, I think the moment didn't come i never got my opportunity i went to that college mm -hmm. and and sat on the bench for four years and i did everything i could they don't get the golden egg what do you say at that point same thing i did everything that becomes like a different conversation, right? I think if they're still in it, right? Like what's one more thing you could do, right? What's the, what's the next thing you could do, right? If it's something where like, hey, they've gone to school, right? They've, you're reaching them now post-career, right? Yeah. If I'm working with somebody post-career, yeah. right? Now we're, now we're starting to look at a transition phase, right? So it's, it's really about looking back and, and, and understanding what happened so that it influences your narrative going forward and your story going forward. Like, what are you gonna take away from those experiences? And what does it say, and this goes back to character, right? Or this mm -hmm. goes back to who you are as a person, right? Well, 
you put in all those formative years, what did you put in? What were the strengths? What were the characteristics of the effort and those things that you put in? Now, how do they translate with you going forward, right? How right. Do you what do you get at? What, yeah. what do you bring with you exactly. going to your next phase? Exactly. Yeah. Like, how do you take that with you? <clears throat> did you, and I mean, there's some comfort in knowing that I maximize my, myself, right? If you, f if you put in all the effort, right? And this is why I always stress control and the controllable, right? Because if you, if we know that attitude and effort are the two things that you can control, then throughout you the You say that again? Like attitude, attitude and, and effort, effort right? are the effort. two things you can control. So if I go back to there, and that's going back to that same philosophy again, and we have athletes, right? Goalies or any other athletes or any other people, right? And your attitude and effort was as best as you could, right? You mentioned regrets. It's a lot easier to kind of walk away knowing that you gave everything. If you didn't, yeah, if yeah. you didn't leave it, if you know. Does the military have a, is it embrace the grind or is it in, what, does the military have I think an expression? Like embrace the suck. Come yeah, up embrace the, the suck, that's it. But embrace there's, there's the suck. I think, yeah, every, yeah. I think there's different branches and different units that have different oh, okay. kind of mottos, right? Yeah, yeah. And those does mottos. Does all mean the same thing? A lot of times yeah. it does, right? Yeah. Like pain is weakness leaving the body, right? Like, so I mean, a lot of these things are, they're around to kind of cue you into an environmental or to develop a response, yeah. right? And to elicit an emotion or prime you for something, yeah. right? Um, you got to you gotta prime. You got to, <laughs> every day, you have to prime. You have to watch your fuel prime. Yeah, and, I, and as you're going through and as you're dealing with somebody transitioning, right, it's always better to be like, okay, what did you put in, right? And then what do you take yeah. out of it? Um, and then what's your new why? Right, because right. then it becomes a shift into what's your next thing, right. and how do you take the and how do you apply the lessons? Right, huh. is it now that you're going to go back in and give something? Right, paid for it is become a coach. Right, yeah. is it that you're going to take those skills and transfer them into business? Right, because now I've been through adversity, I've grind. Like, so what's next? What are those two things again? Attitude and effort. Attitude and effort. I almost want to write that on my blocker. Do <laughs> you know goalies do that? Yep. So right on the top of their blocker, they get Corey's got his thing. I mean, everybody's got their thing, but but it's just it's a great place. And and I think all maybe some goalies don't know about that, right? You know, maybe uh, that's something what they put their uh, attitude and effort would be a great thing to have on your blocker, um, you know, or on your mask. <laughs> Right. Well, I think the more you can make contact, right, with, if, if, you're, if you're really looking at your why, right, and mm -hmm. this goes back to this whole idea of... And you got to know it, too. Yeah. You can't just blindly do stuff, <laughs> blindly play a sport or blindly yeah. do anything without knowing why you're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to be the best. Right, you right. can blindly do stuff and accidentally yeah, do walk things, through right? it. Exactly, yeah. but you're not going to maximize. If you're going to look at the course of like your life, right, the things that you're going to put your energy and effort into, right, you want to have that clear, right, because the more your personal story that you're going to be kind of leaning towards, right, that you're going to be kind of driving towards, um, where you're going to allocate your resources is going to be in one direction, right, and so the more you can put yourself and set yourself up. And then when mm -hmm. it comes to like putting it on the blocker, right? Mm -hmm. What that does is it allows you to make contact with it in under stress. So you see it and you're like, oh yeah, it's about attitude and effort, right? You could be struggling in that, just give up a bad goal. You look down, you see attitude and effort. Okay, do I have the right attitude right now? It's That's just an instant control. gut Forget check. about the goal. That's it's it. just a gut check, yeah. right? And it's just a moment for you to kind of to be there and see it. I think I did this on our last podcast, kind of brought outside influences in. Okay. What do you say when someone goes to you, things aren't going well, Steve. You're not playing well or, you know, uh, other kids have gotten scholarships and you haven't got a scholarship and your commitment or you don't know where you're going. What happens, how do you act or how do you react when someone from the outside starts making you question your commitment. Steve, I, I, don't, I don't know why you're doing this anymore. I mean, you haven't got a scholarship offer. 
I don't think you're gonna play college hockey. Like, maybe you should just not play anymore and, and concentrate on school. Mm. That would be a wise decision. That would be a wise decision, Steve. Sure. Right? What do you say when people, and they could be the most well-meaning people in the world, mm -hmm. when they start questioning and making you question your commitment level? What, how do you handle outside influences? So this comes up often, especially with like in that high school goalie who's not sure if he's going to go on to a college or junior team, right? Yeah. You see it with college goalies going on to the next level, like I'm kind of in this impasse, right? What do I do? And I think w we talk about journaling, we talk about writing, getting it out of your head in previous podcasts, mm, yeah, right? Yeah. I think doing a cost-benefit analysis, right? Like literally seeing where you're at, right? And allocating or indexing your why and your commitment level within that can be really helpful, right? And literally putting it on so you paper. put it on paper. Right, so it gets it out of there, and now, I'm, now I just take a high school kid, and it's like, I love hockey, right? Maybe now I'm only playing a low D3 school, right, if I, if I play at all. Is yeah. that worth it, yeah. right, to, to try to maybe do a year post-grad to go there, right, or should I just go back to school, right? And these are- Is it is worth it? Right, and these, yeah. and these are questions that come up, right? Yeah. And you have them see, like, how important is it to you? But right. you're doing the cost-benefit analysis, not someone else. Yes, right. And like, you, the, and you, like you're, make, you're making that decision. Absolutely, right. That you want it or you don't want it and what you're prepared, your commitment Cause, level, cause what, what, you're, what you're prepared to do. What would happen if deep down in your gut you wanted to pursue it, right? I w I'm willing to take, to maybe delay my professional life, like my work life for two years because I want to make this commitment to try to be on this college team, yeah. right? And that's in your gut and you feel that like an internal sensation, right? And you just, you give that up to others from the outside, right? 10 years from now, 20 years from now, are you, how are you going to feel about that situation, right? My yeah. guess is that if it the was- The rocking chair test. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, like, you know, yeah. how does that look, right? Versus there's some guys who are, are girls who at that point, they're done, right? And they just, when someone asks them that or you ask them to put it on paper, they kind of see like, wow, it's, it's, I'm done, yeah. right? And so I think for them, it's just putting it on paper and then really kind of looking at it, right? What's a benefit for you? And, and one of the things we did in goal setting, right? Well, what's a benefit and what's an obstacle, right? And you do that back and forth, you contrast them, right? And then you kind of just look at it and you talk about it. Can, maybe I get, have, can I get over those obstacles? Exactly. And am I willing to put, this goes back to what is commitment, am I willing to put in the effort, am I willing to put in the time to overcome those, yeah. or has that ship sailed? At the end of the day, I bet you you know. Like you deep down, mm -hmm. like you know. And I like the fact that when you're doing your cost-benefit analysis, you're looking at what you need to do where you are, I don't think anybody really has to tell you, <laughs> you know, where you really are, and then what the chances of of getting to where you want it, where you're going. I, I like the fact that it it comes down to you, and and not someone else, you know. Um, last thing, kind of on the on the commitment. What about overly committed? Like, and and those guys I train some of those guys mm -hmm. that you know I, I train guys that, that this is some guy they won't get off the ice like I, I, I have to beg them to get off the ice because I know that the overuse is going to cost them down the road and I also that's from the physical side and the mental side I understand how important it is to get away. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually saw a thing the other day, um, a piece on a professional athlete that was all about hobbies mm -hmm. and how successful people have hobbies. And the real neat thing about it was, you know, they didn't necessarily have to be good at it. <laughs> you, you, sure. you know, like it, it's so they went through Winston Churchill and all these yeah. different famous people that you know would paint or write or 
uh, you know, do yoga or like have all these hobbies that they were into. And it wasn't the fact, because they were elite, whether they were president of the United States or leading the NBA in three, three pointers, they were tremendously successful at what they did, but they all had these hobbies that would get their mind off what they're, you know, what they were famous for mm. and allow them to just, and they didn't necessarily have to be good at it, sure. but it just got their mind away, but that's a whole different tangent. But so whether it's a, the mind or the body, right? These people, they, they think they're being committed mm -hmm. or I want to commit them, but they think they're being committed by going over the top. How do I handle how do I handle those, or how do I as a coach or a parent handle those kids that they want to be good, they, they want to do everything they can, they won't get off the ice, they won't stop training, they're, they're in the gym way too long, they're doing too much. In, in intrinsic motivation, committed is like the gold standard, right? And if you think of yeah. it as a spectrum, you're going to move from kind of like pathetic and you're going to progress down the spectrum all the way to committed beyond committed is where you get into a danger zone and it's referred to as like compelled right like you're compelled, compelled is, is yeah. as opposed to committed yeah and so when you feel with commitment there's a sense of control or engagement on your part compelled is like you have to right and compelled is dangerous because it starts to almost get into clinical, you know? Right, you're right, compelled, right. You're compelled right. people in, in certain sports might have eating disorders. Might, might, they might start to overtrain, which is gonna cause over injuries, right? Yeah. Like you start to see things in people and behaviors, right? That become, almost, that become diagnostic, right? right in a right. way that it's not healthy, right? Motion, emotionally, physically, socially, spiritually, like intellectually, like these are not healthy ways to kind of live. Um, and there's a timetable where you just can't push back, right? I think education, if I'm a coach and mm -hmm. I see an athlete like this, it's about education. It's about education on overuse, mm -hmm. right? It's, an, it's about education on not having those hobbies, right? Or not having other avenues. Mm -hmm. I think you start to worry about identity formation and like, is, there, right. so, is there something else about you? Or are you yeah. just the goalie? Yeah, or that's a really good, you know yeah. I mean? So like, yeah. I know that when those people start to get compelled, they, they, their resilience drops, right? And one of the things we know is that human frailty, right? Is like a good starting point for, re, for developing resilience, right? Understanding human frailty. When you shift from commitment to compelled, you make yourself vulnerable to feeling, to being frail without having the awareness of accepting it. And I think that becomes a very dangerous spot or a very intimidating spot for an athlete to be in. Um, and it's not a healthy one, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. education and education, having deep conversations, and we always talk about what questions and trying to dive deeper and understanding what values and beliefs might be below the surface. You don't have to be- Because you don't want to discourage them. No, you don't you have know, but. To. Well, you, you want to discourage them from the unhealthy behavior, yes. right? You want to you want to rein them back in so they get to committed and are in a healthy space. And you know who you are. <laughs> you know who we're talking about right now because you know if you're one of those yep. overuse guys, like yep. you 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 got to know, right? Mm -hmm. Or am I wrong? Or do they not see? It depends on the story that they're telling themselves, right? If the story is that the reason that I'm a good goalie is because I work hard. Right, and I have this value and this this yeah. deep belief that hard work is the best. Then I might not see it. I might be blind to the right, fact, right. right, and be so singularly focused, right. And it's a hard line because a lot of times, what made them get to the team, what what made her get to that team, is because she put so much hard work in, right. And that allowed her to elevate herself, and she saw herself rise from a middle school and high school. You know what I mean? She saw this growth, to now, all of a sudden. It's just gone a little bit too far, right? And there's this shadow side to it where, you know, when I cross that threshold that I'm doing more harm than good mm -hmm. and it's hard to come back. Out of time. <laughs> We're done another podcast in the books. Uh, fantastic. 
So if um, if you like the podcast, you enjoy the the primers. The the best place to go is YouTube. Just look up Fuel Athletic Success Training um, on YouTube, and you'll be able to to see the whole array. Wells Aiken does this awesome job. <laughs> it's a great job. Presents everything, and and you have the primers there. That so the way fuel works. The concept behind it is you have your daily primer. It's a minute, you know, give you a good thought for the day, work on your mental game. And then every week we have the assignment, Steve Brown's assignment, um, at the end of each week and gives you something to to put into action, let's say, put on paper Mm -hmm. some of the things that we we talked about in the primers. And then then we have our monthly podcast. So uh, thank you very much for... uh, for uh, being a part of this and and, uh, enjoying it. Uh, We love doing it and uh, appreciate you watching. Awesome, thank you guys.